Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Welcome to Friday Night Trivia. Back, Happy New Year. We missed last week for Christmas, but we're back now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my new countdown. Technically, I'm about three minutes late because I'm still figuring out exactly how to give you that countdown, but let's not worry too much about that. I sure hope you're having a great New Year. 2021's been so fan so fantastic so far, I would imagine. Uh, we got a lot of fun American Revolution themed trivia to do today. Uh, I am going, still getting used to my new and improved setup, although it is improved, I am not necessarily 100% custom to it. Uh, I see everyone rolling in, Matt, Troy, Ashley, Misfit, uh, Grace, everyone else who hasn't commented yet, feel free to comment, I'll say hi to you too. Thank you so much. Troy, what's going on? San, Di San Diego Padres flannel. If that's what you want it to be, that's what it'll be today. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about some fun American Revolution trivia. We're going to mix and match some of what we've done this week uh, in the past few weeks. Uh, we're going to play a little bit trivia website, which is fun to guess together on the same team. I have several trivia cards here. We can see who gets them right and who gets them wrong. And we are going to be giving out another sticker. Next week, we're going to get into a bigger prize. I know it's New Year's, but... I. There's a whole lot going on on this side of the camera, figuring out this new setup. So, and I, oh, quick announcement. I am going to be having some interviews coming up very soon, which I am pumped for. You should be excited too. Any hoozle, we're going to be giving out a sticker this week for whoever gets, guesses the founder of the week instead of, or founder of the day, I guess is appropriate. Hi, Tari. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I have figured out because of that countdown, I am exactly 15 seconds ahead of you. And that's good to know now that we know. So, we're going to do, I think we're going to start off, we're going to guess the United States founding governors, which is a 12-minute game. I think we can beat it before the 12 minutes are over. Uh, and then we'll play some cards I have here from several different types of trivia guessing games and board games and such that I have laid out here. I have nine cards here. And then we'll finish with the grand finale, which is what we had done two weeks ago. We will do the grand finale where we will try and name all of the founders involved with the legislative branch of the American founding. It is a, if I'm not mistaken, 243 names. Last week I looked into it. We guessed 113. Uh, I did a practice round just before this. So just to brag for a second, I got 119. So I beat the group. <laughs> but then again, this is what I do with my spare time. So without further ado, I am going to pop the screen over here and we are going to pop to this screen. Here we go. There we are. And I'm down there. And this behind me, uh, as it pops up 15 seconds later, we have we will have 12 minutes to name the U.S. Founding Fathers who served as state governors. Now, this is a team game. This is a warm-up. It's lots of fun for people popping in. We're going to go through. We got every single state in the whole wide world, at least the ones that were there uh, when they were colonies. And we're going to see if we can pop out some names. So... If you're ready, and I assume you are, I am going to be watching very closely over here where it has all of your um, comments and therefore guesses. I am going to hit play quiz now. Again, I'm a little bit ahead of you guys, so it will take a few extra seconds to come in. But here we go. We are off and going. Uh, feel free to start naming anyone that you think may or may not have been a governor of any of these fine uh, young states at the founding of the United States of America. I am stalling now. Again, there's that 15 seconds. I should have told you guys to go before I hit go in hindsight. We're living and we're learning. This is fun and we're going to have some fun. Uh, Governor of New York, there is only one and Ashley blowing away coming in here with Clinton. Uh, the one, the only from New York governor. Uh, Grace with John Jay. John Jay is a great uh, guess. John Jay would take over in 1796 for George Clinton. Although they seem to be targeting uh, anyone who was around until the Constitution was approved. I should have I should have made that uh, excuse me a little bit more clear. Uh, let's see. We got uh, but I will you know I'll type in John Jay just in case. Uh, Patrick Henry more than likely. Thomas Jefferson I do believe so. Uh, Ashley saying Morris. Uh, and I I oh there is no Morris but Ashley coming at it right away. Morris is the name of the week, the founder of the week. Bernard, let's do that. Good guess, Matt. So I did skip over it a little bit, Ashley. Thank you for your guess, Lauren. I, I don't remember you being here before. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Patrick Henry is absolutely right. I didn't, in my haste to make up this new setup, I forgot to make the flash card thing that pops up for the founder of the week, who was Robert Morris. So Ashley, you yet again get the founder of the week. I'll have to make it a little tricky last time, but that's okay. Uh, we will talk about that at the end. Um, 
I actually should have saved it for the end there, the grand finale. Oh, well, Bernard, I tried, but did I spell it right? Uh, and Adams. No, there was... Uh, not in Adams. Again, Matt, uh, Samuel Adams would be governor of Massachusetts, but that was in, I think, 1795 or 1796, so just after this uh, particular one. Um, we've got Lee. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if you were expecting uh, Thomas Simsley, governor of Maryland. Oh, you said Thomas Lee. Okay, well, I'm going to try Thomas in case that's another answer. Nope, okay. <laughs> well, good job, Troy. Uh, Thomas Simley, yeah, I, I, you know what, I have read, I think I wrote an article about him a while ago, but I do not remember a ton. Preston, Preston, oh, I'm not seeing a Preston, ooh, this one's a little tricky, guys, a little tricky. Now, say the names you're thinking of, because there's at least one that's going to go up here that everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, uh, duh, <laughs> um, uh, and, and I'm not going to... You met the Virginia one, yeah. Uh, Thomas Lee, I, I think, was older brother of the other Lee family. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Ashley, I, it was going to be Robert Morris, but I, I made it up, but I was just making it up, like, right before we went live. I was like, oh, no, I forgot, and then I didn't finish in time because, you know, obviously, <laughs> I'm really good at hosting this channel. I am going to have interviews really soon, I swear. Um, everyone's congratulating Ashley, which she did a very good job. But uh, we still got all these governors here. If you want to throw me some names, uh, I will give you hints. The governor of Connecticut was the only person who was a royal governor and then sided with the colony when they left the greater uh, uh, Great Britain nation. Uh, all the other royal governors left, but the one from Connecticut hung around, had several sons, participated in the revolution. Uh, Rutledge from the South Carolina... If I spell it right, there is certainly... Oh, that's right. He popped in twice, too. John Rutledge Tarrant. Great guess. Excuse me. Um, but as for Connecticut, one of his sons was a painter who painted uh, likenesses of many American founders. Uh, Winthrop. Good guess. No, Winthrop. So Winthrop was much earlier in colonial Massachusetts, though his descendants did hang around... And uh, I think it was James Winthrop who wrote the letters of Agrippa, which were very important anti-federalist papers. Uh, Hancock, there it is, Madison. Uh, Madison, Matt. There it is, Matt. Uh, Mason, I'm going to try. No, although Mason was an important uh, member of the Virginia government. Wolcott, no, that's a great guess, though, Misfit. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, Hancock was one of the names that's like, oh, yeah, of course. But there is another name here that uh, we really should be getting. I don't want to give it away. Oh, Ashley. Trumbull, that's the name. He stuck with the Patriots. Dickinson, great job, Lauren, because that's two different states. And if you notice, those years, uh, yeah, they overlap a little bit. For part of 1782 and most of 1783, John Dickinson was governor of both Pennsylvania and Delaware. Livingston, there is going to be a Livingston, William Livingston, for... That's a long time, 1776 to 1790. That is most of the revolution. Not quite as long as George Clinton. <laughs> most of it. Uh, and Smith, let's see. Oh, Johnson. Dad, see, Ashley gets it. You got to start saying regular, com super common last names. We did get a Lee, I think. Uh, Skyler, no, I don't believe so. Keep that mind and name for later when we're doing the big master ones. Keep all these names in mind. I was a little nervous doing this game um, because... Not because we're saying the names ahead of time and remembering them later, but because we'll forget. Because we'll think we already said them. So, remember all these names. Same again. <laughs> they won't all work, but many of them will. Uh, Skyler was absolutely New York. And if I accidentally said Schuler before, it's because I pronounced it like that for like... I, I had lived in Albany, New York for a little bit, and uh, pronounced it wrong for most of my life. <laughs> Till basically... Basically, till I started listening to Hamilton. Because even though I knew the correct way to pronounce it, it was already ingrained in my mind wrong. Um, so if the Schuyler sisters did anything for me, it was teach me how to pronounce their and their father's and their brother's last names. So uh, we are at five minutes. We're just under six minutes. We are just past halfway there. There's a lot of governors here. Um... Again, there's one of the big six names. I, 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 this is kind of a giveaway. If you've watched this channel, you know what I call the big six. Um, I don't want to name them now, but they are the biggest names. 
Uh, one of them is already here if we're looking for, oh, and I am, oh, I'm just realizing I'm above some of them, but Thomas Jefferson uh, is already up here. Hopkins is a great guess. I don't believe so, but that is a fantastic guess. Gwinnett, Misfit, coming through down here in Georgia. Oh, in Georgia, oh, wow, Georgia has a lot of governors. <laughs> um, so there it is, Ashley. There it is. We got Franklin. Benny Franks up here was for a few years. Technically, they called it president. It was president of Pennsylvania, but it's all the same. Router, dump me on back. Welcome back, Troy. We still have plenty of time and plenty of American founding governors to name. So uh, toss them out. Harrison. Now, Harrison, that's a guess, Misfit. You've been practicing that... Uh, Benjamin Harrison, there it is, whose son and great-grandson would both be presidents of the United States of America. Uh, and he was five. And I think his great-grandson was technically seven, who was president in, like, the 1890s, the gay 90s, as they called them. Um, uh, well, uh, where was it? Paca. Paca. There he is, governor of Maryland. Misfit, you've been practicing the... Uh, the Declaration Signers. That's a good way to go right about now because several of those people who signed the Declaration of Independence would run back home and become governors of, the, of their states. Uh, in fact, John Rutledge down here, he uh, left instead of signing the Declaration of Independence. Actually, so did William Livingston. Both men voted for independence and left before uh, signing. Okay, William Livingston voted for it and left before signing. John Rutledge, I think, voted for it but left like real close to there. Let's see. Um, we got Hall. Yep, Hall down in Georgia. Going on down to Georgia. Monroe, no, I don't believe so. He was a young man who had just started fighting in the war. Reed, great guess. George Reed of Delaware. Yes, a very important person. Now Misfit is just naming signer. Sherman? No, Sherman signed a lot of stuff. Never governor. Uh, he was mayor of... Uh, let's do the other Reed. Uh, yes, both Reeds <laughs> made it. Uh, he was mayor of uh, New Haven for a while, and then uh, an early member of the uh, you know, uh, an original United States House of Representative, uh, Thornton. I do. Oh no, he really? Man, I thought Thornton was a governor. Did I spell that wrong? Where's New Hampshire? Thornton. Am I? Sp oh, okay. Well, we can all be wrong sometimes. Lewis. Nope. That's a great guess though. Pendleton. There it is. Edmund Pendleton. Right away. Notice 1775. Even before the Declaration of Independence, he was already serving, uh, kind of uh, unofficially. That's a, it's a long story. Burke. Thomas Burke of North Carolina. Ashley, whoa. Uh, Troy, I, we, I think we did do Gwinnett, if I'm not mistaken. I will spell it like you did, but it's it's N-N-E-T-T. -T. No, wait. Gwinnett. Oh, no, yeah, it's two N's. Wait, we already did it. It's down here. <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. Von Gwinnett. Uh, great guy. Well, unless you're uh, Lachlan McIntosh, then you think, but Gwinnett is, uh, pardon my language kind of name. <laughs> there was some tension down there, to say the least. Uh, which, did I publish an article this week about, um, uh, yes, today, today, today's founder, Houston. Uh, something, uh, Houston, as he pronounced it. John Houston had a lot of anger at him. Um, Huntington. Samuel Huntington, governor of Connecticut. Um, I think I just gave away a name, if that's a hint. McKean, yep. There he is in Delaware hanging out. Martin, that's a good guess. Alexander Martin, ooh, a twofer. Uh, Davis. J.U. Davis. Misfit, where did you come up with that name? I have never heard of J.U. Davis, who apparently must have been an interim governor, I would assume, because he served for less than a year. There were two other gentlemen who served as governor during that same year. So that must have been a really... I'm going to actually write about that guy this week because I want to learn about Pinkney with a C, Matt. Wait, no, is it with a K? Pink... No, it's Pinkney. Yes. Both Pinkney brothers. There you go. Also early presidential candidates. Uh, but just heads up, there is a C. <laughs> uh, oh, did I see Sumner? Sumner, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, Misfit with Pinkney also. Oh, Misfit, oh, Misfit spelling it correctly. Just rubbing it in. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, uh, 33 out of 90. What do you think? 30 seconds. Can we get two more? Can we get 35? I think we can. Just like the little engine that probably could. <laughs> um, uh, and no one from New Hampshire or Rhode Island. Oofy poofies. Uh, man, I'm having trouble, and I'm sorry if you hear the uh, trucks driving by. They are apply, are salting for the snow, and they are super loud. Wolcott, let's see. Did he make it? Nope. Oh, Henry? Uh, no, no, Henry. Matthews, and I'm out of time, and I am 15 seconds ahead of you guys. So go ahead and guess for the next 15 seconds. Let's see. I'm going to see if there's a Matthews on here. Um, Fenner, that's who I just wrote about. Man, I couldn't, I couldn't think of that movie myself, and I published that like a week ago. Um, let's see. Over here. Langdon and Sullivan just rotating for 15 years. Uh, two really important dudes. Um, Mifflin, I think Mifflin, I think Mifflin is on here. Where's Pennsylvania? Where's, but yep, Thomas Mifflin. Oh, 11 years. Oh, he served for quite a while, longer than I recalled. Owen, Owen, Owen. No, Daniel Owen uh, was the one that John Collins sent from Rhode Island to tell George Washington that Rhode Island had finally belatedly become a part of the Union. Uh, need to branch out more into the... Oh, well, I'm sorry, Troy, because I focus too much on the political history. Um, I will say, though, what we can do, there is Founding Fathers Military, which we can definitely do, um, though maybe not this particular week. Um, we are... In, we're about 20 minutes in. We're gonna play. My plan was to play these games for a little bit, and then uh, with about 30, 25, 30 minutes left, try and do the big popular one. Um, this one with the hundreds of people. <laughs> um, but before that, I'm gonna bring me back up. Hello. I am going to also pop this over. New system, setting it up. Moultrie down there. Okay, so. I want to give a big shout out to Liberty and Co, who I did put it on the last screen in the corner, uh, although I have not put it up as the real sponsorship. Again, redoing my whole setup here. We're going to play some other trivia with the cards themselves, uh, but since someone said Moultrie, I want to give a special shout out to Liberty and Co, uh, who sponsor these weekly trivia games, and who my spouse knew I wanted for the holidays, uh, things from there, and she just got me the Moultrie shirt, which I wore and is in the wash. I meant to wear it today, but I'm a moron. Uh, I assure you, their Moultrie shirt with the South Carolina flag on it is super comfortable and looks great because it's the Moultrie flag. Um, and I am going to throw this up here because I don't know where it's going, but uh, I did get, and I hope you could see that, live free or die the New Hampshire state motto, which comes from, uh, uh, b b b not Bennington, John Stark, General John Stark. I'm sorry about these trucks. They're super loud. Uh, General John Stark of New Hampshire, who actually would say that years after when he uh, retired. And I think it's going to go up here because I don't like how bright it is over here. Maybe that'll dull down. I'll figure it out. I will figure all this out, I promise. Um, Troy, thank you for showing me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for coming and learning with me. Uh, I assure you I will do my best to learn more about the, the military. The, for the last few years, the military is what I put most of my focus in because... I focus too much on the political part, which is garbage. So here's what we're going to do. We have our what happened here cards. If you remember these, we have our talk about the constitution cards. Not all of them are just right at the uh, revolution. Some of them are more modern day, but that's okay. It's the constitution. And these are the, from the American revolution kids game, seven and older. So <laughs> let's do those questions. If you're ready for me, uh, start answering now because I'm 15 seconds ahead. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. So we're going to do what happened here, and you can't really see these. Um, and if I hold them too close, it screws up the camera for the rest of the video. So I'm going to hold them back here. Right on the border of New York and New Hampshire, Bemis Heights, New York, October 17th, 1777. What happened here? What happened, to repeat, what happened in Bemis Heights, New York, October 17th, 1777. I am going to sip some water real quick while you guys give me the right answer. I am just seeing over here that you cannot see that card at all, and I apologize. But I'm going to start making my guess because we're waiting for you, and I don't know the answers to these, but I will say, hmm, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm going to be super embarrassed if I am, 
uh, Bemis Heights, October 17th in particular, I believe is I know I know it's part of the Battle of Saratoga and the Saratoga campaign, but I believe Troy coming in, I think October 17th is the day that Burgoyne actually surrendered to the Patriots. <clears throat> General Horatio Gates accepted the surrender of British General John Burgoyne and his 5,800-man army after the Battle of Saratoga. Blah, blah, blah. Troy got it right. So did I, just to brag for a second. Uh, <laughs> I, I also want to note what's really interesting uh, is, so that 5,800 men that were surrendered with Burgoyne, uh, they were taken first to Boston and kept prisoner there, and then they were transported across the United States. I want to say Edward Hand, but it's not. It's Theodoric Bland actually transported this army that they called the Convention Army, for whatever reason. Uh, they transported them from Boston to Charlottesville, Virginia, several hundred miles, and although some people deserted, uh, it was considered an astounding success. Let's move on to the next card, shall we? Why don't we check this out? I'm not great with dates either, Misfit. That's actually why I usually leave them out of my articles. Uh, a few important dates I've put in there, and over the last six months or so, I've started putting years in more to help people gauge the approximate time and place it was, but uh, I don't like to bog people down with dates, usually, unless we're playing this particular trivia game. <laughs> okay, but this one is the Constitution card. So, let's see what we know about the Constitution, shall we? Can a political party limit participation in its primaries by race? Can a political party limit its participation in its primaries by race? That's a very interesting question. Because now, in modern days, we want to say no, but historically, we know definitely for a while they could. So the question is, is it still acceptable and it's just gone out of style and there's never been a real law? Or has there been a law made? And if so, when was there a law made? Uh, I am going to step out on a ledge here, and this is going to make me sound like a terrible person. <laughs> um, but no, I don't think, because political parties are technically private organizations. So while it is illegal to stop people from voting uh, on, on presidential candidates, in presidential elections, I, you know, when they're choosing the people to run in the primaries, I don't think so. I think it's just gone out of style. So we got uh, Matt saying no, Matt saying, uh, Tara saying no, Misfit not now, yes, historically, Lauren, that it would violate the 14th Amendment, Ashley saying no. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, it says, it says can, can a political party. Um, so yeah, I think most of us are coming through with the same idea. Um, let's see. Uh, no. No. Even though political parties are not government agencies, the Supreme Court ruled in Smith v. Allwright, 1944, the primary elections are an integral part of the election process and therefore are subject to the constraints of the 15th Amendment, which prohibits denial of the right to vote on the base of race. So, most of us were wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very interesting. That's very interesting uh, that it was in 1944, too. That was a long time ago. Like, that was before segregation. But even that long ago, they, they I guess they realized the political parties were such an ingrained part of the way the political system works that even though they're not political, like, not technically part of the Constitution, technically something George Washington warned against and many of the founders, at least at first, didn't like. We know that Hamilton and Jefferson and the like... Uh, did end up very much liking political parties. Uh, despite what they said in public, they were very much uh, surrounded by them. So, now we're going to go to this board game that has no board. Uh, and we're going to go, these cards have, oh, and I'm going to cover up the bottom so I don't know, but we're going to talk about the Treaty of Paris. Now, there were many treaties of Paris, including the one that ended the Seven Years' War, a.k.a. the French and Indian War. But we're going to talk about the Treaty of Paris that ended the American Revolutionary War or the uh, American War for Independence, or that little dust-up in North America, as I'm sure the British would call it. 
Uh, so, first question, true or false? All right, this one should be pretty easy. True or false? The peace agreement was named the Treaty of Paris because Paris was the capital of Britain. And I'm on a 15-second head start here, so I'm just going to start the next question because we, uh, I think most of us should know um, that, no, Paris is in France and not Britain. Um, so, anywho... According to the Treaty of Paris, what river marked the western boundary of the United States? According to the Treaty of Paris, what river marked the western boundary of the United States? And this question seems a little easy, and I think because it is a seven, ages seven and older game, I think it is pretty easy, but there is I think there's a little bit more of an expansive answer to that. Uh, I'm going to sip this real quick. And I'm not even sure what the expansive answer is, to be honest. But Lauren's already coming in with Mississippi. I think that the answer to this question is Mississippi. But the Northwest Territory that the Americans won in the war goes further west than the Mississippi River. And I think the northern part of the territories should have gone to the Missouri River. If I'm not, I, I think it would be the Missouri. I'm gonna check. No, this card only says the Mississippi River. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit while we look at the next question. Because <laughs> if you look at the map, and I'll bring up a map. Let's see, uh, give, give me a sec. You know what, I'm gonna read the next question while you guys are answering and I'll look up a map. The Treaty of Paris required the colonies to form one country. True or false? True or false? The Treaty of Paris required the United States form to be one country. And I'm going to do a map of... Uh, la, 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 uh, U.S. after Treaty of Paris. I don't, I don't, can't think of what to look up. True or false? <laughs> uh, the... Treaty of Paris required the United States to be one and only one nation. Oh, man. Okay, no. Come on. Okay, everyone's coming with false. And and, and no, it's got to be false, right? Of course it is. False. No, because everyone thought they'd be 13 separate nations just like they saw themselves as. I am going to very quickly, while we're doing this, though, pop back over here and see if I can uh, open this up in a new tab. No, because it's opening as Treaty of Paris. That's not what I want. Let me look. I just want to look <laughs> at what things look like. Can I open this one up? Open a new tab. Is that going to let it happen? Uh, this one is a little hard to see, but... Uh, and I don't know if you could follow my, my cursor here, but... See, this is the Mississippi, but up here... Is that count as the Mississippi? This is the Missouri... I'm not, you know what, I I'm usually consider myself pretty good at geography, but I am not entirely sure if that counts as the Mississippi up there. Okay, I, this is killing me. This is killing me. Maps. Let's go to maps. I'm sorry if, I'm, if I'm, I hope no one's leaving here. The Pantheon? What? Oh, because the Treaty of Paris. Okay. Let's see. Come on up. Okay, back to America. Right back down. So, here's the Mississippi River. Oh, yeah, because it does go up to uh, St. Louis. So, that counts as the Mississippi, huh? Oh, it's going slow. There's the Illinois River. This is still the Mississippi? Oh, it is. Oh, well, see, my mistake here, the reason I'm a bit confused, is because I thought when the Mississippi hit the Ohio here, I thought this was a different body of water. I suppose I thought it was the Illinois River. I guess not. I guess that means the Mississippi goes to Canada? Well, learn something new every day. And I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I am now embarrassed in my performance. Uh, please don't unsubscribe. I, I assure you I put a lot of research to everything I publish. Uh, we didn't come on... Yes, Tara, absolutely. We didn't become one country till then. Uh, those states didn't cede area between... Miss in Missouri until later. That's right. So that would have been um, in the treaty. Uh, uh, um, 
The Louisiana Purchase is when we went further west of the original allotment of land, of course. Um, and I feel like an idiot. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Where am I? Bring me back. I am already back. Okay. Am I really that far ahead? Okay, I must be a little bit further ahead than you than I realized. Either way, let's play more games. Um, there's more questions on here. We're going to do the grown-up side now. Am I, excuse me, one second. Again, I apologize. I am still figuring out this new setup. This says 32 and 40 seconds and 37 seconds. Yeah, okay. Just a little bit ahead. Anyway, let's continue. After the war, the Revolutionary War, after the Revolutionary War, what country regained possession of Florida? Good question. After the Revolutionary War ended, who had control of Florida? Uh, and not to give too much away, uh, not to give too much away, but it says after the war, what country... <clears throat> regained possession of Florida. Oh, and I see some answers coming in. Uh, yeah, Misfit. No, don't give Sam Adams trouble. We have no room for self-doubt like that here. Uh, we're, we're all learning. Uh, as you can see, I'm even learning at times. Uh, and era, everyone's pretty much coming in with Spain. Troy asking East or West Florida. Great question. I like where you're going. Uh, does not matter. Uh, both. <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> so, uh, I see everyone coming in. Yeah, it's Spain. Spain had control of Florida. Obviously, there's a lot of Spanish names down there. St. Augustine, for example. Um, uh, loses it. The Great Britain actually takes control of Spain for a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, not Spain. Whoa! So Great Britain takes control of Florida for a little bit there. Uh, and then after the American Revolution, Spain, notably Bernardo de Galvez, the royal... the I guess, royal governor of Louisiana, uh, helped out the Americans a great deal by attacking the British in several places, including Florida, and then Florida became Spanish. Okay. You gave away your spine. <laughs> okay, my bad. <laughs> um, okay, next question. Who did not, not, in bold letters, not capital, just bold, so I guess it's, uh, who did not participate in the peace negotiations in Paris. Now there are one, two, three, four names here. Which of these four people did not participate in the peace negotiations in Paris? Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, John Adams, or John Jay? Again, who did not? And you know what? I am going to throw in another uh, a little bonus question. Uh, who else did participate that I did not just name? These names, again, you want to pick one that didn't participate. Franklin, Washington, Adams, or Jay. And if you can tell me who else was there that is not on this list, I'll be very impressed. Uh, fresh from the Tower of London. And everyone's coming in with George Washington. Yeah, George Washington was busy fighting the war that they were trying to end. It's not that... Uh, I'm surprised it's on the grown-up side. Uh, why if I decide to be awful? Oh, no, Ashley. Really? Um... You, so you just jumped in. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Go with what works. Uh, Troy, Hartley, uh, you're on the right... I think you're on the right track. That is not the name we're looking for, though. Um, I will say it is the father of someone famously in the hit play Hamilton. Matt, Dean is a great guess, but Dean would have left by the time they saw... Sadly for Dean. Uh, he left before this time to go back to the United States to bring the French army and Navy to North America, uh, and thinking he would be receiving great fanfare, and he most certainly did not. Uh, Tara, Franklin is one of the names here. So just to give it away, um, the name I'm looking for is Henry Lawrence. Henry Lawrence is the father of John Lawrence from, Lor uh, from Hamilton and the Revolution. Uh, and Henry Lawrence had gone over to negotiate with the Dutch for a little bit, and then his ship was captured. He spent about a year in the Tower of London, and then was actually exchanged for Lord Cornwallis uh, after the Battle of Yorktown. And Lawrence, instead of going straight home, went to Paris, where he was not officially a member of the delegation. 
Uh, but he is in the painting that they have that's unfinished of the Americans there. Um, Matt Lee is also a good guest because Arthur Lee was there for a while, but by this point, Lee, Arthur Lee had returned to, after uh, like a decade, returned to North America and joined the Continental Congress, and his brother William Lee, the least appreciated Lee brother other than maybe Francis Lightfoot, uh, was at this point somewhere else in Europe. Uh, I want to say Netherlands, but he might have actually gone to like Vienna or something like that at that point. Anyway, a little off track there. That's okay. We're having fun here. <laughs> um, so, last of this card's question. True or false? The Treaty of Paris will quote... Easy for me to say. True or false? The Treaty of Paris required the colonies to return property to loyalists who did not fight in the war. Not any loyalists. Just loyalists who did not fight in the war. True or false, the Treaty of Paris required the colonies to return property to loyalists who did not fight in the war. And answer me. <laughs> this one down here. And I will wait patiently. It's my, that's the shortest song in the history of the world about being patient. I wrote it just for you guys. Oh, that's weird. Okay. And I switched my thing, and now I'm live here, and now I'm back. Okay, getting a lot of truths. So, yeah, the technically the Treaty of Paris said that the Americans needed to return property to loyalists who did not fight in the war. Very infrequently did this happen, for a variety of reasons, including the fact that many loyalists ran away during the war and fled to Great uh, Canada, usually, or Great Britain, or one of the, uh, you know, Loyalists in the South usually went to, like, the islands, the Caribbean. Um, so even though, yes, technically true, it didn't often happen. And furthermore, uh, on the flip side, it also said that the British were supposed to evacuate all the forts in what is now the United States, and that didn't happen. That didn't happen. <laughs> Pretty much at all. Uh, to John Jay's great disappointment. In fact, one of the reasons for the much-hated Jay Treaty that it went through is because the British were supposed to evacuate the forts then, 15, almost 15 years later. That almost didn't happen. It would take about 30-something years until after the War of 1812 when the British were like, all right, fine, F it, we're going, we're gone. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Uh, what's our time here? Okay, we're at 39 minutes. So, I think at this point, you know, because we don't want to make it too much longer than an hour, what we're going to do now, we will bounce over to try and do the master list of American founders, uh, and then we'll see how we feel at that point if we want to run through another trivia card or two. Sound good? Great. So, I'm going to pop back over here and pop back over to the interweb. And this is the old one. We are coming here. I'm going to pop this back up. Again, you're not seeing all the pop that I'm talking about. I get that. I get that. Um, so, this is the master list. Now, just as a reminder. Okay, Matt, one second. <laughs> one second. You're a little ahead of yourself. But I appreciate your enthusiasm. Uh, just as a reminder, these are the American founders involved with the legislation of the early United States uh, government. They have to fall into one of five categories. They were either a uh, delegate to the First Continental Congress, a signer of the Declaration of, Art uh, of Independence, signer of the Articles of Confederation, an attendee at the Constitutional Convention, or a member of the First Congress. So, just to relapse a little bit. They, not everyone who went to the Continental Congress counts. Only ones who signed something important and then someone who is either a, an, a, an inaugural member of the United States House or the United States Senate. So, we are going to come down here. Again, I'm a few seconds behind you, probably like 15 seconds behind, I would think. Uh, 41, yeah, or 10 seconds or so. But either way, we are going to run through the master list. So just start listing names now. Go. I already started. we got 20 minutes to do this. Now, uh, I'm going to give Matt his atoms which is at least three correct answers that I know of. And while I'm waiting for you guys to start, I'm going to do the big six. So I'm going to do Jefferson, uh, Madison, Washington, Franklin, Hamilton, and Adams. Those are what I call the big six. They're the big six. Good night, bud. I love you. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, Sherman. 
a great answer. Lauren, always, or Ashley, yeah, always a great answer. Livingston, good, I uh, guess. Uh, Madison, put him in there. Troy with Hosmer, good one. Folsom, interesting. Ooh, it worked. I'm not even sure who that is. I like it. There's a lot of names on this list. Uh, Jefferson, we did. Lee, I think we did. Hamilton did. Hancock, of course, that's a big signature. Payne, Matt, I knew you were going to throw Payne out, Matt. I can count on you. Lawrence, we were just talking about that, gentlemen. If I could spell it, I can't. Oh, man, they're coming through quick. Morris, Gary, or Jerry, who knows? I'm sure he did. Penn, yes, that's a correct answer. Uh, Lauren, okay. Uh, Henry, Smith, Skyler. I want to spell him right. Because King, keeping up with you guys. Davis, no Davis. You really want Davis to work today, don't you? <laughs> uh, Hopkins, Rodney, Hooper, uh, Galloway. Hi, Jeremy Galloway. Yes. Uh, uh, welcome. Please subscribe. Uh, I'd love to have a member of the Galloway family here, uh, despite your loyalist tendencies. Uh, Jer uh, uh, as I'm typing and responding, uh, Mr. Jeremy Galloway's seventh great uncle, Joseph Galloway, was a member of the First Continental Congress, who Mason, Penn, did Penn, <laughs> trying to keep up while I talk about it. Uh, Dickerson, I think you mean Dick Inson, Dickinson, uh, Thornton, Stockton, I assure, oh, Cat, come on, Cat's knocking things over, I'm really trying to tell Mr. Galloway about his ancestor here, but I'm sorry, sorry, sir, I believe I have made a video about him, so definitely check, uh, what am I doing, Stockton, okay, type Stockton again, Wentworth, J.G. Wentworth, just kidding, that was one, Ames, Fisher Ames, he is, King, uh, uh, did King. Strong, Dayton, Reed, Rutledge, Dickinson, uh, uh, Williams, and I'm going to do this for you guys. Williams' son. Williams' son. Wow, you guys are really rocking him out this time, huh? Uh, Walcott. Cot, two T's. Okay. Uh, Gotham. Interesting. Nope. <laughs> Mason. Uh, Lewis, uh, Misfit, uh, um, and there was one, Stockton. Not John Stockton, Richard Stockton. I know he was in the, in the thing. Lovell, Langdon, Huntington, uh, yeah, Mr. Galloway, uh, he was a member of the First Continental Congress and proposed the Plan of Union, uh, which ended up being extraordinarily similar to uh, the United States Constitution and very much reflected what Benjamin Franklin was saying 20 years earlier at the um, Albany Congress, which essentially said that there would be like uh, a, a president of North America. Oh, I got to keep up here. I'm sorry, man. I would love to talk more. Yeah, there's definitely a video out there. It's probably an old one where I wasn't making videos very good yet, but the information's still right. Pinkney, Matt, again with the C, bud. No, is there no C? Did we already do Pinkney? We must have already done Pinkney. Uh, Floyd, yes, from my hometown. Reed. Did we already do Reed? Reed? Oh, Smith. I gave it away. Already did Smith. Livingston, I do believe. Uh, yeah, so Galloway Plan of Union was presented, and they were talking about it at the, at the First Continental Congress because that was the, the only plan they had. Gwinnett, definitely. Uh, and then... All of a sudden, Paul Revere shows up with the Suffolk Resolve written by Dr. Joseph Warren over in Massachusetts, and that just totally changed the direction of the whole conversation. Instead, they did a boycott, um, and just and really, it was actually less radical than what Galloway was saying. Um, uh, no, Roe Ro is not nearly that famous, Misfit, but I appreciate that. Uh, I think we did say Hancock. Uh, yeah, and I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Galloway, that I'm destroying i think we did sherman destroying the conversation because i'm trying to type all this stuff in at the same time uh but definitely subscribe i talk about uh revolutionaries all the time I, I can make another video about galloway super interesting he uh like i said he had a plan of union but then things got a little too radical and once it went in the direction of independence uh he actually ends up uh becoming a loyalist because things got a little too radical which was not uncommon several people at the first continental congress uh which the first continental congress was six weeks long and they filed some grievances the Second Continental Congress, uh, good job, Ashley, remembering Hopkinson after Hopkins. Uh, the First Continental Congress was six weeks. The Second Continental Congress was 15 years. Um, so some of the people at that first one did not stick with the Union. Um, I think Galloway ends up going to 
England? Not Canada. I think he goes to England. I'm not sure, but the Galloway family was a really important family. He was really important at the beginning. That's why he was at the First Continental Congress. He was so important uh, to the community at the time. Lynch, Pinkney. Okay, we've done Pinkney several times, and I keep spelling it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, we've gotten him up there. Uh, Morris, did we do Morris? Morris is the name of the day. I think we did Packet. No? Okay, good. Keep them coming. It's all right if we repeat them. It's better to repeat them uh, here. Did I spell that wrong? Yeah. It's better to repeat them here than to think we already did it and not do it. Uh, let me see. That. Yeah, much like Isaac Lowe, who was really important to New York, Mr. Galloway, um, also became a loyalist, despite re essentially being the one who pushed... New York towards uh, rebellion. Martin Stone, we are killing it. By the way, King, I think we did King, yeah. Um, I know I'm spelling that one right. <laughs> McHenry, yes. Whipple, one of my favorites. King, again, <laughs> I keep typing it. I'm glad you guys are playing. And, and I know uh, some people lag behind a little bit, so please don't be embarrassed about saying it twice. Clinton, oh, I'm going to have trouble reading that, Mr. Galloway. That's a... <laughs> um, the Galloways have always been a little radical. He left for England, I think, to keep away from being charged with treason, probably because he couldn't really stay in Philadelphia. Like, some people stayed in Philadelphia because Philadelphia was such a big city and it kept changing hands that you could stay in Philadelphia without choosing a side, but the fact that Galloway was at the First Continental Congress and then became so against what was happening that he probably would have been charged with treason, as many people were, but, you you know, there were people, uh, Mifflin, Witherspoon, um, uh, there were people like... Uh, Tench Coax, who was there the whole time and never really chose a side. No one knew who he cared for, uh, but still ends up hanging out and being important to the early United States, you know, because because he didn't make his intentions known. It was better to be looked at uh, by certain certain people who wanted to be certain people wanted to be important in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, no matter who won. So it was better to be mysterious about your loyalties than to tell anyone <laughs> or switch sides. Blair, Middleton, Chase. Oh, we must have done Chase. Jay, thank you, Matt. That would have been a hard pill to swallow had we not gotten Chase. Now, just so you know, last week we got 113. Uh, and we're at 98 right now, which means we are only... We're only 8 minutes in to a 20-minute thing. And we are, what is that, 10? We're only 15, 16, 17 behind. Uh, did I get Dayton? I don't know. Dayton. We must have. There are names that sound like that. Uh, I think we popped in Rush. Yeah, we did Rush. Good. Dr. Rush. The good doctor. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Galloway, if you like the American Revolution, you've come to the right place. I do. Uh, this live video is fun. I have a live study hall if you have any questions, which I'm not in a rush to answer things. So on Sunday uh, at noon Eastern time, and this week it will actually be at noon, not at 12.15. Uh, and then I write articles five days a week about the American Revolution. Uh, and so therefore on Wednesdays at 8.15 Eastern, we have a live discussion about the American Revolution, uh, where I will talk about the last five articles, or last seven articles I published over the weekends. I publish old ones, uh, and I talk about those founders. And then the other three days a week, I just put out a brief video about someone who's underappreciated from the American Revolution. So if you like American history, uh, you've come to the right place, <laughs> I like to think. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Obviously, we have a community that likes to participate in these games. Uh, white. Uh, what if we spelled white correctly? There you go. Any other colors you guys want to guess? Uh, there are probably a few more colors that will show up there. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Thornton. Did we do Thornton? Thornton. Uh, Thornton? No, okay. Yeah, we must have done. Carol? Did we do Carol? I can't remember. But like I said, guys, keep guessing ones you think we've done. It's better to guess ones we haven't done. Johnson. Uh... We've done Johnson, but have we done something that sounds super like Johnson, but has one, a T somewhere in there? Uh, Payne, I think we did get Payne. Bartlett, classic. Oh, just like the West Wing. Houston, thank you for paying attention. Ashley, thank you for being a, a dedicated reader. Uh, Green, but if we had an E, nope. Uh, Green was general, but did not actually serve. Uh, at, even if he served in... The Continental Congress, again, this is only people who sign things, which I don't love, but, you know, someone took the time to make this for us to play, so I'm going to do this. No red and purple. Come on, Matt, get your head in the game. I will, I'm going to type in purple so you have to see me type it. <laughs> there it is, Misfit Johnston. I always like to follow Johnson with Johnston. Oh, and everyone else, Ashley and Lauren. Okay, Chase, do we do Chase? Maybe. Um, 
It's an afternoon sweet. Yeah, uh, just like and subscribe, man. That's all. Uh, hit the notification button, too. I think a lot of people forget to do that because there's a lot of subscribers that are there but don't ever seem to watch. Uh, other than this delicious group of people, Heart. Heart. We must have done Heart because he definitely signed uh, the Declaration of Independence. That's for certain. Baldwin. Okay. Oh, we got him. Okay. Five more to catch up for last week. Six more to beat our last record. And we're only about halfway through. Stevens. Let's see. Interesting one. Should we try with the PH? Also, no. Nice try, though. Uh, magenta. Black. That's a better guess. Did we do black? We must have, because there is a black. Uh, I'm going to try it, because there's nothing coming in. <laughs> Clark. Oh, Clark. Did we get Clark? Did I spell it wrong? Yeah. I spelled it wrong. Adding C's and whatnot. Tom... Son. Does not work, but I'll tell you what, if you take that P out of there, Mr. Galloway, Charles Thompson was the Secretary of the Continental Congress the whole time. Lawrence, that's right, and we did Lawrence, but uh, there's also a Lawrence spelled Lawrence. I'm pretty sure there's another one. I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> she give me more spellings of that. Um, I'll be able to do. We must have done Morton Tarrant. Uh, uh, Morton Salt. I know Ashley likes to throw out Morton Salt there. Uh, no, uh, Misfit, rather. Um, Taylor, Skyler, for sure. We must have done Skyler. Hold on. We must have done Skyler already, because he was an original member of the United States uh, Senate. Later to be beaten by Aaron Burr. Um, Ross. Really? Ross? Matt Redacted. Retracted. Why do they say retracted? Shouldn't it be message redacted? Broom, there you go. Tarry, good one. Yates. Yes, that man left the Constitutional Convention. The football player. Blount was a football player. There were other football players. Other running backs, in fact. In the last 10 years. One of the best ones of my lifetime. Thompson. Uh, I think we just went through Thompson. Oh, uh, silence. Uh, Burke. Burke. Did I miss Burke? Oh, I almost missed Burke. If there's something that you guys saw come through that you think I missed, definitely say it again. Because I probably did. I got off on that Galloway tangent. It was great. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Jones. Interesting. No, not that popular a name back then. I. Well, that's not true. There was John Paul Jones. Wiley Jones spelled Willie, but Wiley, who also had a brother in the Continental Congress. Oh, uh, Armis. Dead. It's a good guess, but no. Randolph. If we haven't done it yet, there it is. Wife, absolutely. Wilson, do we do Wilson? Nope. Nicholas, just piling. Th yeah, looking back at my articles from this week. Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I think I actually did say a name before when I was talking about Galloway being a f at the first Continental Congress, then a loyalist. I said there was someone from New York who was also uh, uh, important and turned loyalist, but would be a correct answer. Butler, <laughs> Butler. Uh, you guys remember who I made a video about yesterday? You guys are reading my articles. I know you like to watch the video. I know this crowd likes the live videos more. Uh, not everyone. Some people here watch all the videos. Uh, some people here don't necessarily watch the regular ones because the algorithm on YouTube isn't going to feed it to you. If you seem to prefer live videos, they're not going to tell you about the regular ones. But I made a video yesterday. And it is a correct answer. No, Ramsey is a good one. Uh, Ramsey. Hmm. No, nope. because I know I typed it differently because I know there were two brothers. One spelled one way, one spelled it the other way. Uh, Henry. Did we do Henry? Oh, yeah, I guess we did. Uh, Rodney. We must have already done Rodney because he's Rodney. Certainly signed some documents. Excuse me. Lynch. Jameson. Nope, that's a good guess. Pendleton. There's the Pendleton family. That was at least one. Oh, and we're well ahead of where we were last time. In fact, when I played earlier today, I got 119. So we have beaten me. <laughs> Not that that's saying much. Although it is, because I'm probably the person who's played this game more than anyone in the world. Granted, I that was a few years ago. As I said last week, this is the game that inspired me to start Founder of the Day in the first place. Because look at all these names who never get videos about them or get articles written on them. So Sumner's a really good guess. Actually, I'm going to try Sumter. Nope. Also a good guess. You're welcome. Gadsden. There it is, Troy. The Sam Adams of the South. Hall. I think we did Hall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we've tried Thompson uh, in all sorts of ways. I'm pretty sure every single person at this point has said Thompson. 
Oh, keep that name in mind. There's got to be a founder of the week next week, right? I'm out of water. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got five minutes left, and we got four minutes left over here. Three minutes. Okay. Dobbs. Oh. Dobbs. Nope. That's his middle name, man. You got the middle name, Richard Dobbs. Who, like, always reminds me. I had a friend in high school named Charlie Dobbs, and always reminds me of that kid. I haven't seen him in 20 years, and I wonder if they're related. And I'm not going to give it away. Matt and Troy. <laughs> I am. <laughs> his name is Richard Dobbs, governor of Georgia, shot in a duel. No, uh, not Georgia. Um, North Carolina. No. Yeah, North Carolina. Okay. I don't, know. I don't know. I made the video yesterday. It was ages ago. Uh, Williams. Is there another name that looks like this with something at the end? Dobson. Richard Dobbs Dobson. Uh, I'm going to do dubs just in case I'm, I don't want to look like an idiot. Slaughter. I think we have tried Middletown. Middleton. There it is, Matt. Richard Dobbs Spate. I love that name. I'm surprised it took me so long to make a video about it. Or, or did I write an article about it? Like, this is... How much content I'm putting out for you guys? I can't remember if it was a video or an article. <laughs> I know it was a video. I mean, it was... No. I know it was an article. I can't say the word video. I know it was a video because I remember making the thumbnail. Anywho, so we have three minutes. We are at 124. What do you think? Do you think we can get to 135? Do you think we can get 11 more names? Uh, I'd be happy to scroll through. If there's a, a place you want me to sign, a few articles from signers from Virginia. Uh, a lot of people in the first Congress from Virginia. First Speaker of a Congress. Interesting. Uh, video. No, I'm not even going to type that. How dare you? <laughs> Tracy. That's a good guess. Uh, Jerry, I think we already did. Uh, Brown. There it is, Misfit. Good guess. Uh, let's see. People from New York. Uh, people who left the Continental Congress. Uh, Declaration of Independence signer from New York, I think. There should be one over here. Oh, no. We got all those. Never mind. <laughs> did we? Yeah. Oh, we got Lewis. Okay, yeah. I guess we did. Uh, Massachusetts. Let's see. We got people from New Jersey. Inns. Good guess. I don't believe so. Yeah, but that's a fantastic guess, Misfit. Um, uh, President. Oh, there's a from New Jersey, a president of the Continental Congress. When it says Congress of the Confederation, that is the Continental Congress after the signing of the Articles of Confederation. Uh, Dyke? It's an interesting name, but no. <laughs> uh, Constitutional Convention delegate from Connecticut. Uh, let's see, we're doing North Carolina. Did we get anyone from Rhode Island? Oh, we got the two declaration signers from Rhode Island. Good. Good. Oh, what about his uh, Arge uh, long, decades and decades and decades long rival, who then they teamed up at the First Continental Congress and then died before, like two months before signing the Declaration of Independence. I don't know if those are good hints. <laughs> New Hampshire? Oh, we got some guy. Oh, there's someone from New Hampshire. Oh, Troy, you say you like the war, right? You like the military? There's someone from New Hampshire who's got a very military name. Uh, we got a lot more Maryland this time, did we? Where's Where's Maryland? Are they alphabetical? No, they're not. They're in seemingly no order. We did get a lot from there. Walker, we got 45 seconds. I know we can get to 30. Walker, good one. All right, four more. Can we get four more in 40 seconds? Green, no, we did green. Green was in the war. Stark, no, never served in the Continental Congress, Matt. Good guess. You're thinking right. Uh, really important. Uh, where I live, if you are familiar with me, I live in upstate New York, uh, and there was one dude, <laughs> uh, unless did we already do him, and I'm like, no, we did not do it, Tyler, good guess, ooh, Tyler's, no, Tyler, oof, uh, Gunn, James Gunn, good one, there was, uh, what about Gunning, not Rutherford, Olson, no. Monroe, no, nah, no, nah, he was just a kid at that point. Oh, I was hinting at John Sullivan. Oh, it's behind my head. I'm an idiot. John Sullivan and the Sullivan Clinton campaign in upstate New York. What's really interesting is when I was playing this before, there is no Clinton on here. One Clinton was governor of New York this whole time, and another Clinton was generaling the whole time. 
Matt Skyler, nope, it's spelled differently, and my time has run out. <laughs> I'm a 15 seconds ahead of you guys. Uh, I do want to applaud you, uh, and and me for you know putting this together. But <laughs> uh, a 128 out of 143, that is 53 percent. Boom goes the dynamite. If you remember that reference, 53 uh, percent. If you can see, can you see? Let me let me make sure you can see. 53 percent. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I know we skipped last week. I hope to do this in part each and every week. We'll play the trivia cards. We'll, uh, you know, do our usual routine. Maybe I hope you like this version where we did a shorter one at the beginning. Next week, we'll probably try and find an even shorter one. Do a short one at the beginning. Do some trivia in the middle. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have this. Rock, rocking, rocking out. Um, I think that's fun. I'm having a great time. I think if we do this for a few weeks, we'll be able to get all of them. I would love it if we can get, I would like literally make my day. I'll just shut down the website. I'll just go dig a grave and bury myself in it because what else is there to live for at that point? <laughs> That's a joke. But uh, yeah, John Sullivan. There it is, Mr. Galloway. Yeah, John Sullivan. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get, but it happens. Uh, we should bounce through it real quick. Last week we got Carter Braxton, Constitution Signer. Miss Fit, I know you've been practicing that. Uh, I'm sorry, Declaration Signer. Someone else practiced the Constitution and then we could be ready for that. Uh, John Harvey, great friend of Thomas Jefferson. Um, James Monroe. Didn't we try Monroe? I could have... Okay, I'm going to give us one more, because a few of you said Monroe. I really thought I typed it while I was saying he was wrong, but I forgot that Monroe was in the original uh, United States Senate. He beat James Madison. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming, Troy. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Matt, it's Sporkle.com. Misfits got it. Sporkle, it's amazing. There's an app on your phone, but that's not as good as the website, if I'm being honest. Because uh, even the website can be a little slow and buggy. Like, you don't want to turn it on and then hit start. You want to turn it on, let it sit for a second so all the advertisements can pop up, and then start. Uh, Theodoric Bland, I actually think I said his name, which would have counted for two, because his uncle Richard Bland was here too. You guys got to listen when I accidentally say correct names. Uh, the Mullenbergs, we should have probably gotten that. Um, John Lansing left the United States uh, Constitutional Convention early with Yates that we did get. Um, Isaac Lowe, that's the name I said when I was talking to Galloway. I was like, oh, Isaac Lowe from New York was also a loyalist. <laughs> you gotta listen to me. I'm accidentally giving away a lot over here. Um, Grout's a great name. Um, there was one other one. I don't want to skim through this too fast. Uh, oh, we said Dayton. Drayton. There's also a Dalton. Uh, which, by the way, Matt, football player names, or Troy, whoever it was, Dalton, uh, Thomas Tudor Tucker, look for an article about him coming out Monday. <laughs> um, so, uh, Cadwalder, that's a tough name, but important family. Oh, so we got Houston before, but this is Houston. Uh, so, and there's also Houston, H-U, there, it's also spelled differently, wrong. Um, and then there's also Hudson, spelled wrong. <laughs> um, uh, Dean, we were talking about earlier, but forgot him here. It wasn't the first Continental Congress. Um, Ellsworth, usually, oh, and Trumbull, we were speaking about earlier. Again, yeah, we went through these. I'm scrolling down because I want to get to, I see you guys commenting. Uh, I'm scrolling down because there is one other person that, uh, football player name. And it's, I, there's at least one, here it is. There's one here in New Hampshire and one here. Foster, like Arian Foster who used to just kill it for me in fantasy every single year. <laughs> uh, and Samuel Ward was the one I was hinting at who was like decades-long rivals with Stephen Hopkins here. Decades and decades. One would be governor of Rhode Island, the other would be chief justice of the Supreme Court, and they would switch and swap for decades until the revolution started, and they both went together to the First Continental Congress. And then they both went to the Second Continental Congress, and Samuel Ward died in March of 1776. He was replaced by William Ellery, who made it in time, uh, but his friend Stephen Hopkins there signed, theoretically signed his name for both people uh, and had the famous quote, you know, my hand trembles, but my heart does not. Huh. Uh, I see the comments coming. Uh, thank you. Lots of fun. I will try to make it Sunday. Uh, I work nights, but want to learn. Cool. I, I don't know what coast you're on, Mr. Galloway, or what continent, actually. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I do it Sunday. It does come in later. If you have any questions, uh, that if you can't make it and you have any questions... Feel free to email me or, or contact me through the links below at my Facebook or, or, or Twitter um, or Instagram. If you contact me there and ask me the question ahead of time, 
uh, well, I will try and answer there. Uh, I have noticed that the first few minutes of study hall are a little bit not much to say. So if you want to prep me with a few questions ahead of time uh, and then watch back later, that'd be great. Um, I, you know, I'm open to whatever you guys, whatever's helpful for you guys. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Saint, yep, Saint Clair, he's a good one. Yeah, Monroe, my bad, Gal, Mr. Galloway. I like. Uh, failed time to march in the snow. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, my hand, man. Man, man, you jump around a lot, huh? <laughs> really, really can't accept. I, I, I mean, I do a lot of things right. <laughs> uh, barefoot Mr. Okay, you guys are really coming at me now. Wow, wow. Where's my tissue box? Where are my... Anyway. Uh, I'm glad you aren't commanding officers. Yeah. Uh, Knox stated he knew which fork the main army had taken by the blood in the snow. Ugh. Um, didn't spellings change over the years of names, but also general wordage? Um, excuse me. Um, did names change over the years? Yes. Names have changed. I was actually going to say when we were saying Ramsey before... There were two brothers from Maryland, or maybe Virginia, the Ramsey brothers. You know, I'll just pull it up. We're here. Founder of the day, because I Google myself, because, you know, might as well. <laughs> uh, and also because the Ramsey brothers spell their names differently, and it will help me remember Who's who? Although my computer is going slow because Sporkle. Okay, so David Ramsey, right. I can't remember where he was from. I don't even know if he was his real friend. This guy was uh, the first American historian. He was a physician, South Carolina, founded. So this guy was a physician of uh, a doctor. And he went to the Constitutional Convention, um, chairman of the United States. Uh, Oh, that's right. He was one of the presidents of the uh, Continental Congress, if I'm not mistaken. So then there's Ramsey. So David Ramsey, the physician we were just talking about, he ends up going and becoming the first American historian because uh, he starts writing books about American history. And then he ends up, as a doctor, going to try to help someone who ends up, I think, stabbing him. But he goes to help a patient who kills him, which is terrible. Uh, and then this is Nathaniel Ramsey, his brother, but they spelled it differently. Why? Because they're weirdos. I don't know. Uh, the, the doctor one thought it sounded right, I su apparently, so he went with that. I'm back, by the way. Hi. Uh, I am going to look at your comments. Um, you're in Dallas, Texas. Okay, so that's pretty early for you. Dallas, Texas. What do you like? Two hours behind me. It was like 7.30 for you right now. Eight? Is it 8.30? No. No, it would be further back. It would be 6.30. If I'm wrong, it's 6.30. If I'm right, it's 7.30. doesn't matter. Good night, Troy. Thank you so much for coming, as always. Um, me, not you. It's no big deal. This bit. Don't worry. We're all friends here. No one's ever going to get upset here. Uh, all right, Troy. Eat dinner. Eat me some... Hopefully you're having chicken nuggies. Save some for me. Um, anyway. Uh, any relation to David Ramsey, perhaps? A different spelling for his brother. David Ramsey. I'm not sure who Dave Ramsey is. I will look it up. Seems like a pretty common name. Um, American actor, show host, and businessman. I'm not rec recognizing him. Uh, sorry. I do not recognize Dave Dave Ramsey. I'm sure he's a nice guy, though. <laughs> um, uh, the worst patient in history. Yeah, the guy, uh, I mean, he was already losing his mind, if I'm not mistaken. Chicken Alfredo. Oh, I'm hungry again. I already had dinner. Eight. Wait, it's only it's eight thirty in Dallas. Oh, that's so weird. So you're in Central in Dallas, huh? Because I was just talking to uh, Jameson from the Kentucky History podcast, and he said that half of Kentucky is Eastern, half of Kentucky is Central. 
Doing the same thing as Kentucky. That's. I thought I was good at geography, but between this and not knowing where the Mississippi River <laughs> ends, apparently I'm terrible at it. Uh, Any who's old. So, uh, we're at an hour and 11 minutes, and we do try to keep this at an hour, because, you know, we no try us to go, dinner, go eat dinner. <laughs> uh, and because people who watch later, you know, don't want to watch for that long. So, I'm going to call it for the night. I had a lot of fun. Uh, remind me who said Morris. Was it Ashley this week? I think it was Ashley this week. So, I got to get you, at least, I got to get you. Uh, 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 hit me up. <laughs> on the things uh, and I will get you whatever prize it is that we can get you this week one of the stickers I know you have a bunch of them Ashley yeah you you said it. I know I've already sent you a ton of stickers so uh, hit me up either email or, or social media and I'll, we'll figure out which one you don't have <laughs> it'll be easier than figuring out which one you have um, next week I will make it a more challenging one let's see if someone can pull it out uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, you are the very best. I, I do, did we decide how we're ending these? It was Peacefield. Ah, why can't I remember? I'm going to have to write it down and put it like right up here in front of me. So, with that in mind, I need to find the new way to stop streaming. Okay, I found it. I'm figuring this out. I'm going to figure it out. Thank you for playing trivia with me. Thank you for having fun with me. Thank you for being here. And thank you for your interest in American history. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to ask. And a great time to do that will be this Sunday at noon where we have study hall. Thank you again. And I will be back Sunday. So 